The Salar de Arrazario is home to one of the most spectacular natural formations, Cono de Arrita. At first glance, it looks like a pyramid, but it is in fact all natural volcano, which sits on a bed of salt. The cone stands over 400 feet above the sea of salt. There are many questions regarding the cone's origin, but some legends and archaeological clues indicate the natural formation could have been used as a ceremonial center prior to the arrival of the Inca civilization. In our previous part of our presentation, based on Sten van der Hoven's research paper, and which offers a connection between pyramids and volcanoes worldwide, we will link Mr. van den Hoven's paper below guys, so check that out. We previously discussed the Great Cholula Pyramid and how this idea dawned on the author as he was looking at the backdrop to the Cholula Pyramid and we encourage you to check that out first if you have yet to do so. Izapa is just another example where the site perfectly aligns to a nearby volcano and it is also laid out just east of True North with the exact alignment being 21 degrees east of north. It is aligned with the volcano Takana and also seems to be situated to the December solstice horizon. In Aztec mythology, I Stax Iwatl was a princess who fell in love with one of her father's warrior, Popocatitepel. The emperor sent Popocatitepel to war in Oaxaca, promising him I Stax Iwatl as his wife when he returned. I Sekitowatl was falsely told that Popo Katitepo had died in battle, and believing the news, she died of grief. When Popo Katitepo returned to find his love dead, he took her body to a spot outside of Tenochtitlan and kneeled by her grave. The gods covered them with snow and changed them into mountains. East Axiwato Mountain is called White Woman because it resembles a woman lying on her back and is often covered with snow. The peak is sometimes nicknamed La Mujer Dormida, the Sleeping Woman. Popo Catitepo became an active volcano, raining fire on earth in blind rage at the loss of his beloved. There is a sanctuary found atop Mount Tilalok, dedicated to the god of the same name, and it is thought that the location of this sanctuary, in relation to other temples surrounding it, may have been a way for the Aztecs to mark the time of year and keep track of important ceremonial dates. Research has shown that different orientations linked to Mount Tilalok revealed a grouping of dates at the end of April and beginning of May associated with certain astronomical and meteorological events. Archaeological, ethnohistoric, and ethnographic data indicate that these phenomena coincide with the sowing of maize in dry lands associated with agricultural sites. The precinct on the summit of the mountain contains five stones, which are thought to represent Tilalok and his four Tilaloke, who are responsible for providing rain for the land. It also features a structure that housed a statue of the god, in addition to idols of many different religious regions. Mount Tilalok is the highest peak of the part of the Sierra Nevada called Sierra del Rio Frio that separates the valleys of Mexico and Puebla. It rises over two different ecological zones, alpine meadows and subalpine forest. The rainy seasons start in May and last until October. The highest annual temperature occurs in April, the onset of the rainy season, and the lowest in December and January. Some 500 years ago, weather conditions were slightly more severe, but the best time to visit the mountain was practically the same as today, October through December and February until the beginning of May. The date of the Feast of Huey Tezatli celebrates atop Mount Tilalok coincide with a period of the highest annual temperature, shortly before dangerous thunderstorms might block access to the summit. The first detailed account of Mount Tilalok by Jim Rickards in 1929 was followed by visits or descriptions by other scholars. In 1953, Wick and Horacatistis carried out preliminary archaeological investigations at the site, and their conclusions were repeated by Parsons in 1971. Archaeoastronomical research began in 1984, some of which remains unpublished. In 1989, excavation was undertaken at the site by Solace and Townsend. 
The current damage that is present at the top of Mount Tilaloc is thought to be likely of human destruction rather than natural forces. There also appears to have been a construction of a modern shrine that was built in the 1970s, which suggests that there was a recent present attempt to conduct rituals on the mountain top. Another weird find is this, a man-made mini-volcano named El Volcan, which in the 1960s, archaeologists had noted the volcano-like mound and identified it as artificial. This volcano is astonishing, a mound built by human hands with a crater dug out of the top, which some archaeologists are trying to figure out just what it was used for exactly. A crazy undertaking which must have had a purpose, one which is long forgotten about in our time. If we move from the Americas to Bali, we see also here an interesting volcanic link relation on the existing temples. The reason for Bali's temples on the slope of volcanoes or Cholula in front of volcano predates Hinduism and relates to the pyramid, or perhaps we are better to call it volcanic worship. The most important temple on Bali, Puro Bosaki, is located on the slopes of the Gunglum Angung volcano, where the gates of Puro Lampuyang Temple in Bali, again a volcano, is framed perfectly in its view, identical to the Cholula Pyramid in Mesoamerica. So what about Egypt, the place famous for the pyramid builders? Egypt has no volcanoes, correct? It is no secret, as Mr. Vandenhoven points out. The Egyptian god Ptah was an earlier form of Hephaestus, or Vulcan, and again, the volcano link is obvious. If this is established, we can then ask ourselves, why can we see similar cultural links between temples and pyramids, since these cultures are not related according to academic scholars, and just the easiest way to build a tall structure? As a dead-end answer with no further explanation offered, to date, besides empty sarcophagus, no pharaohs were ever found in their pyramid tomb, at least not in Egypt. In Mesoamerica, the find of King Pakal and the Red Queen, who were both found inside their pyramid tombs. The answer to why pyramids were built, besides tombs for pharaohs, was never given nor were relations found anywhere in the world. Mr. Vandenhoven has shown that on numerous different sites, not only in the Americas, but also in Bali, the nearby volcano was the reason for the construction of the pyramid and temples nearby. In the Egyptian region, a symbolic memorial tomb as message to the future might explain the effort made to build these ancient wonders if millions had previously died in a catastrophic volcanic event in the past. In this sense, the pyramids are warnings of catastrophic volcanic events. Is this another coincidence or does a picture start to appear? The author goes on to further propose the vulture and the snake on the Tutankhamun death mask are the constellations Vega, Vulture Candens, and Draco, successive polar star constellations. Relations to Vega that even in modern times are related in our times, in the American Eagle for example. Questions arise, why was the worldwide bird cult so important? A global volcanic cataclysm occurred in human history that later gave rise to pyramid monuments worldwide, and perhaps the memorial on Easter Island as close to a mother continent, perhaps. Perhaps further excavations reveal more as there is a lot of soil deposited on the statues and the island as a whole. Scientists have proven increased volcanic activity occurred due to less pressure on the mantle from melting ice in the last ice age. This would have triggered volcanic eruptions and tsunamis worldwide, destroying civilization and causing worldwide death. A vulture would be the right image for Vega and basis for the bird and pyramid cult worldwide. The bird on the mountain, Vega, Vulture Candens, and killing people on Mayan pyramids might be what Mayan priests symbolically reenacted dressed in bird costumes doing sacrifices. It might be why the priestess of Mu Egypt wore feathers from vultures, Mu's the motherland. Perhaps Atlantis was the homeland of the Egyptians. Pyramids are volcano representations and a symbolic remnant of a destroyed motherland 
as memorialized to their ancestors. Since an Egypt pyramid is Mur, there is the Sudanese Miro culture, Maru. Su Maru means good Maru. There is even a volcano named Su Maru on Java, believe it or not, suggesting if Egypt was part of Atlantis, then Atlantis must have been a global empire. According to Will Durant, civilization exists by geological consent subject to change without notice. The effects of the last great eruption that created the modern shape of Santorini, probably one of the most violent in European history, on people and society at the time was and still is debated. In 1930, the Greek archaeologist Spyridon Maronatus discovered the remains of the ancient port city of Santorini, referred as Akrotiri, burned under the volcanic deposits. The archaeological digs revealed that Akrotiri was an important outpost of the Minoan civilization, with its cultural center on the island of Crete, distance just 74 miles from Santorini. Like Pompeii, the volcanic deposits preserved the city. However, unlike Pompeii, no bodies were found. The inhabitants apparently evacuated the city in time, never to return. Carbon dating of burned wood recovered from the ruins give a date from the eruption around 1600 to 1627 BC. The eruption was so violent that it generated a series of tsunami waves hitting the coast of the large island of Crete. Some authors have suggested that this widespread destruction caused by the eruption inspired also the myth of Atlantis. Greek philosopher Plato writes around 350 BC that 9,000 years earlier, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth, and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. Greek seismologist Angelos Galanopoulos noted in 1956 that the surface area given by Plato for Atlantis is almost 10 times the surface of Santorini before the eruption. Supposedly, sometime in history, a zero too much was added to the story. So if we assume 900 years instead of 9,000, the real date of the eruption fits better, even if not exactly with Plato's given date. However, there is no direct evidence to link the destruction of Santorini with the supposed tragic fate of Atlantis, and anyway, Plato's writings were of political philosophical nature and not meant as historical accounts. The Nile, Nila for blue in Sanskrit, the lotus flower, the cobra has led the author to suspect that Egypt was a Vedic colony. The oldest worship is Agni or fire altars, which would pretty much fit in with a volcano. What if the global pyramid cultures only started after leaving the Asian Vedic motherland as remnant of the volcanic deluge and dispersed in direction of Ireland, Europe, Greece, Egypt, Peru, and India, and seeded the globe, hence the similarities in culture, and the globally seen staff deity for Ophiuchus, Orion's Hercules, exact 180 degree counterpart in the sky. Above him sits the real Hercules, again, but Hercules occurs in multiple places in the zodiac, for example, also one of the twins, Gemini. Vega the vulture and Aquiella the eagle are basis for the US eagle and the double-headed eagle of Freemason and Garuda. As you guys can see, a picture starts to form. Many names in Teohuacu have Sanskrit links, Kala, time, and Vira, man, Kocha, mixed ancestry, are some of them. It would explain the similar reed boats found in Egypt, Indus Valley, and Lake Titicaca, Peru. The Erosagitta near Vega killed the Cyclops in Greek myth, the single eyes. Writer Richard Cassero thought the Cyclops was the Bindi wearers. This could then well be another reference to the Vedic Asian homeland destruction of the megalithic pre-civilization. There are stories how a single arrow with fire at its end, referring to a comet, destroyed the three cities. Perhaps a comet impact triggered the volcanoes. The Danavas, including Maya, were present at the time Taipura was fuming. 
the torment caused by Taipura was unbearable that the Devas asked Shiva to kill him. He did by using a single arrow. The killing of Tripura by Shiva was described as Tripura Samahara. The exact process of killing is described in the Shangam Tamal text called Paratatal, which is an exact description of the destruction caused by a volcano. Shiva killed Tripura with the mountain as the arrow and the snakes, mantle, magma as the string. He blew the three fortresses of iron, silver, and gold, molten material by shooting a single arrow which has fire at its end. The snakes, as we told before, personify the magma trying to come out. This describes the sudden and powerful eruption of fire and mantle from inside the mountain volcano, which resulted in the complete collapse of the volcano. Of course, this is worth further research and considering the link between volcanoes and pyramids as a deep-rooted message to further mankind that was the basis for a cult that came after such a deluge and might have been a basis for a global pyramid and temple mount culture. A temple mount culture that later had the gods on top in form of constellations and resulted in our modern age religion of one god. The original message and warning and the reasons of the pyramids and maru-shaped temples lost in time. The countdown at Giza of the astronomical clock. What do you guys think is going on? Are pyramids and volcanoes connected across the globe? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.